Hello, I'm Data, and today I have for you a bit of a change of pace from my usual storage tech content. Some automatic flying water generators. On top is a three-directional water floor maker by myself and fellow Qualcomm employee, Schmo. And below is a simple water curtain generator that cleans up after itself pretty easily. So let's take a look at these in action. First, we'll take a look at the water curtain generator. I'm going to initialize the water sources by putting a water source here in this stair, and also one more on top of this sticky piston. And then to start the flying machine, I just have to press this button here. And now we're starting to get a water curtain. So why might you need a water curtain outside of just having a water curtain for itself? Uh, there's two real use cases I know. Uh, the first one is on the left, and it's converting a big wall of concrete powder to just plain concrete. And then the second use case that I know of is, let's say there's some terrain or maybe a wall or something that I want to protect from TNT explosions. I can have a water curtain act as a big shield to protect the blocks behind the water curtain from this TNT blast here, for example. So this TNT will blow up the stone underneath it, but it won't affect any of the blocks behind the water. Now let's take a look at the three-directional machine. To initialize the water sources here, I place one in the stair one on top of the sea lantern, and then one more on top of this observer here. Then to start the machine, I just have to break this redstone block, and then update this sticky piston by clicking this note block here. And when I do that, we'll see the flying machine launches off. When it arrives at the station, the station will move the flying machine one block forward, but it'll move itself two blocks forward. And we do this so that we can generate water sources both going in one direction and then going back in the other direction, just like that. Now, say you want to clean up the water that you generated with the curtain. All you have to do is replace this sticky piston so that it faces towards the water curtain, and then press this button on the dropper here. And that'll remove all the water sources that you placed, including the two initial water sources that you placed back here. Now, in case you want to pause the three-directional um, the three-directional uh, water maker, all you have to do is go to either of the stations, and then power this regular piston so that it's locked, and then wait for the inner flying machine to return. And if you want to start it back up again, you go through the exact same process, unlock the piston, update the sticky piston, and then let the flying machine go off. And I'm going to pause it on this side right here. And we wait for the flying machine to return. Now, I'd like to go through the steps of how we create water with flying machines. And all of it starts with having movable water in Minecraft. Now, there's two main ways of having movable water. The first of which is by using frosted ice. So in case you didn't know, an armor stand wearing frosted ice boots is able to generate frosted ice. And frosted ice, if it isn't directly adjacent to two frosted ice, will instantly melt. So if I pull this frosted ice here, the frosted ice instantly melts, and we've created a new water source here. Then these two frosted ice melted, and then because we have two adjacent water sources, we generate a new water source in between. So we started off with four water sources, and now we have five water sources. And since 1.13, we don't actually need to use any of this frosted ice, uh, any of this frosted ice stuff. Uh, instead, what we can do is sticky piston block dropping with a waterlogged block. Now, what sticky pistons uh, are able to drop their blocks if they receive a pulse less than or equal to two game ticks. So if I click this note block, we've now moved this water source uh, one block forward. Now, it's very important to know this only works on the extension of a sticky piston. So I can't just retract the sticky piston to move that water source back. And it only works with waterlogged blocks. So I can't just place a water source here and then expect it to move forward. And it only works with sticky pistons. So even if I have a waterlogged block here and I have a piston and I'm sending it a, a pulse that's less than or equal to two game ticks, we don't move the water forward. And it has to be a pulse less than or equal to two game ticks. So if I have a sticky piston here and I give it a long pulse, it also deletes the water. So to recap, sticky piston, pulse less than two game ticks, less than or equal to two game ticks. 
waterlogged block. I can move water forward. But we don't just want to be able to move a waterlogged block forward. We want to be able to generate a new water source by moving a water block, a waterlogged block forward. And we can do that very, very easily in the exact same manner as we do the frosted ice. We come over here. Here we have two seed, uh, we have two seed water sources, and we're going to move one of them forward with a waterlogged block. And that'll generate two new water sources, one in the position of the old water source, of the old waterlogged block, and one over here, which would be our target location. So we started off with two water sources, and now we have four water sources. Now, uh, it's not just sufficient to have two water sources adjacent to each other to generate a new water source. Um, what you have to do is also make sure that the water blocks are not on top of other blocks that flowing water can replace. Now, one thing to note is that flowing water can replace flowing water. So uh, in case you've ever been filling up a river or something like that, it's really important that at every layer you put water sources. So as you can see, I've placed two water sources in corners and we generally expect like, hey, this is your classic two by two infinite water pool. We're not going to get that unless I start to put water sources at the bottom layer too. So if I put a water source on the bottom, we get a water source here and I put another water source there, we get a water source there. And now we have, you know, the classic infinite water pool. Now, uh, it's important to remember that it has, it can't just be any block. It has to be a block that flowing water can't replace. One of those is water sources, but flowing blocks can replace flower pots, for example. So what that means is that no matter how much water I add to this setup, I'm not going to get an infinite water source. But if I put glass blocks, which are blocks that flowing water can't replace, then I get my expected infinite water source. So with the water source uh, generation mechanics, along with a way to move water blocks forward, we can start to develop a machine that creates a water curtain or creates a water floor. With those principles in mind, uh, let's take a brief look at the core flying machines of both of these water generators. So we'll take a look at the curtain first. Uh, here is going to be our waterlogged block. It's getting pushed by this sticky piston here, and this sticky piston is getting short pulsed by this observer. So we get our waterlogged block block dropping effect, which means we can move this water source forward. And then uh, we also have a target location for a new water source that has a block underneath it that can't be destroyed by flowing water. Slime blocks are immune to flowing water in, all, in that respect, so that's great. So we just have to add one more seed water source, and we have a new water source here. Um, and we've added a couple of extra blocks around just to kind of contain all of these water streams so that we get a nice clean output at the end. And you've also seen that I have this sea lantern here. The sea lantern is just a safety precaution to prevent ice from forming within the flying machine itself and uh, near the flying machine, which might be pretty irritating if you're working in a cold biome. So if I press this button here, oh, that's the dropper. If I press this button here, we have a water curtain generator. And then if I can send it back, not just yet, actually. Let me show actually why I recommend that um, people flip this piston around. Um, it's actually to deal with the aforementioned ice problem. So let's say some ice generates kind of far away from this sea lantern here. This piston will just take care of it by pushing it out away. And then I, the player, I can mine that ice away uh, as a little treat for myself. And if we take a look at the three direction at the core of the three directional machine, uh, I actually misspoke a little bit earlier. Based off the principles that we looked at, we should only have to place a water source in that stair and on top of the sea lantern here. So uh, considering all that, this should just work. I'm gonna press that dropper there, and perfect. We're getting a uh, a chain of water sources here. And now I'm going to sponge all these water sources away. And because we need to be able to generate water sources going backwards, right? And we can't you and we can't pull the stair block with this sticky piston. We have to have another sticky piston on the other side to be able to get that same uh, water effect. Uh, 
water generation effect. So I'm going to send it back. And we're generating another layer of water. And with that, I'd like to conclude this video on some water making flying machines. <laughs> I normally like to know my video title before recording my outros. I am currently debating between uh, calling these machines a, f a water floor generator and a water curtain generator, or calling them linear water generators and planar water generators. You can tell me if I made the right or wrong choice in the comments below. For all the water that is in this video, though, my voice is feeling incredibly dry, so my apologies for the shorter length than usual. Uh, special thanks again to my co colleague Schmo for helping me design the stations and the three-directional water gen. As always, the world download will be available in my Discord server linked below. Uh, feel free to check the description or pinned comment for any relevant updates to this device. Do know I have built both of these devices in survival, so if you need help setting them up uh, or figuring out how the wiring works, don't hesitate to ask me. It's probably best to contact me through Discord. I'm much more likely to respond there. And it's a much easier uh, system to communicate with one another than the YouTube comments system. Uh, and to end off, I suppose myself and that cow that spawned in the background, uh, we would like to wish you the absolute most wonderful rest of your day. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.